this video is to give you an idea that if you go ahead and you rent a boat and generally speaking they are one week rentals going from Saturday to Saturday that's the system it goes from Saturday to Saturday so if you are in Greece and it happens to be uh, a Wednesday you're gonna have to wait till the weekend before you can go out so that's the system any rate, um, I'll get into a little bit more detail. I'll do a separate video on what my real impressions were about the sailing thing. And in general, it can be a little bit on the boring side. And I do think that a lot of it is a sold idea. This idea of, oh, how romantic. Let's go to Greece and rent the sailboat. Well, on, the, on paper, it sounds pretty good. Um, but in reality, it's a lot of sitting around and depending on the weather you do not get a credit you do not get your money back if there is no wind at all and all you did was motor the entire time anyway well, let's let's get into this video so part of the system that they seem to have established is that if you've got wind you can sail if you don't you're going to motor around you and, and if you uh, uh, did not rent a boat bare boat that means that you are also paying for a skipper and generally speaking about two hundred dollars a day plus you pay all the food including the skippers uh, uh, food and I don't know about the beverage drink thing we we try to keep that to a minimum the amount of alcohol that he drank and seemed to me that he pretty much took care of that on his own there were only a few times that we actually all ate out together at any rate so one of the systems are that they uh, will motor you around or you'll sail about and then you'll stop at a little cove like we did here and then you'll jump in the water and you'll have a little bit of a swim for about an hour and about two to four o'clock in the afternoon you'll make way for uh, a place to harbor i mean the water is we're here in june and it's a little bit frisky it's probably in the neighborhood about 70 72 degrees perhaps refreshing when you jump in i found this uh, rather fascinating the colors the sunlight hitting these little micro fish if you will i thought it created a great little pattern i mean my f wife who wasn't as involved with the actual m mechanics of sailing found it to be a lot of sitting around and she kind of flat out was a little bit bored and I would also say that unless you are in a part of Greece where you have really cool islands really cool little villages that you go to visit it, it's kind of generic and it's not the most exciting places to go because you don't have a concept of if you are in Piraeus for example which is just south of Athens well how long does it how long or how far can you sail in a week with even the best conditions and you find that you really have to stay somewhat in the local area so you're not going to get to go to some of the really cool islands I think from uh, Piraeus the furthest that you can probably go out is to Idra um, and then you have to slowly make your way back because that could almost be t uh, two days just to get to Idra. And um, so, but anyway, this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what you might expect if you are taking a sailing cruise. I do think that it is an oversold idea. It's quite expensive. Th they've sort of sold it with a bit of a panache. Um, and people have bought it and it sounds kind of romantic oh we're gonna go sail in the greek islands for for a week but the reality of it is you there is a lot of sitting around I, the spaces are cramped it's difficult to sleep because uh in this part of the country they don't have air conditioning on the boats even though it does get cool in the evenings it, but uh, it can be kind of warm in the cabin certainly during the day where it's not comfortable to go ahead and jump in and take a little nap or something it's kind of a, a step up from um, uh, RV camping, except that you're doing it uh, on the water. And again, I'm going to reiterate that you will pay the same amount whether you have no wind at all and all you do is motor from island to all island, or you have such high winds that you can't sail and then you have to put yourself 
and and moor yourself in a harbor, a safe harbor, if you will, because they're uninclined to uh, uh, take on the challenge if the weather is too high, like an F4 and F5, for example. I think an F3, which I think is about 40, 40 knots of wind, is about the um, the highest that they'll let you sail in. You know, there are certainly cool aspects to this whole idea. Uh, I think in retrospect, it probably would have been better to have picked sailing spots of areas that I was far more genuinely interested in sailing to or, or just had more interesting little villages. Um, uh, th this here, we're here we're coming up to uh, Meth Methana and it gets its name because apparently there was a lot of methane from volcanic activity on this island at one point. Methana. It's not a very, it's not a terribly interesting town. It's a little bit blown out, to be honest. Um, but again, it's sort of one of those things that after you've been out motoring or sailing for about four to six hours, you have to find your way to a harbor. Um, we did talk to the captain um, about just finding a cool little bay and setting anchor, and I think they're quite uninclined to do that. And it's also, you know, you do have, a if, unless you are renting the boat, <coughs> bare boat, you have this <coughs> complete stranger with you on the boat, which is a comment in itself to that you have to be quite careful in so if you're if you're not if you're going to rent a boat with a skipper, you really have to ask questions on the personality and the compatibility of who that skipper is. And I would say in our case, uh, we 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 probably had really different ideas of what we had expectations for on this trip. It was almost as if he had kind of a standard idea, a standard itinerary, and I don't think he quite understood the difference between, for example, a town like Methana. Oh, which is fine. No, but for us, it's kind of boring. It's it's it it, it it's lacking uh, the real character of small Greek little fishing villages that we were more interested in seeing. So there, there are some complications with the sailing, and it's quite expensive. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, we sort of went uh, bed and blue an alternative route, and even the alternative route, it's still for a week. I think it was close to probably with with everything with gas and food is probably close to four thousand dollars for the week, and I would almost say that with all of the um, driving or motoring, if you will, with with the boat that you do, you're almost better just to forget the captain. That's 200 bucks a day right there, plus the food. Um, just get a motorboat and go from island to island if you're if you are not a certified skipper. This is Methana. This is sort of a bit of a walking tour, and you can see what I mean. It, it is a little bit. It's not exactly a cute um, um, little fishing village or anything it's, it's, it, it's as we go into the interior you'll see that it's a little bit more blown out but this is an example of where you may stay on your tour of the Greek islands here we are we're going into the interior a little bit more going to a grocery store to get some extra provisions I mean, it does have some charm. Certainly not inundated with tourists, correct? Just to give you an idea of what a sailing trip would be like. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.